Whenever a new FPS game comes out, what's the one thing people want to know the most? What guns can we use and, well, the original Titanfall admittedly fell short a little bit in that department because there just wasn't enough weapons to use. The second game aims to rectify that, so I recently was able to play Titanfall 2 at the Respawn Studios and get a feel for where the new game is headed. As such, I wanted to go over the weapons and gadgets that I played with and how they may differ from the first game. They are also the weapons that you'll be able to get your hands on when the technical test starts. In the first game, there was around 10 primary weapons to choose choose from. That's not including sidearms or anti-Titan weapons. In the build of Titanfall 2 that I recently got to play we had access to 9 and of course that's only a taste of what will be in the final game. It's important to note that some of these weapons were seen in the first game but I'll go over that in the list now. All of these will be available at some point in the upcoming technical test of the game. So, assault rifles. We only had one to play with and that was the R201 carbine. In the first game we had access to the R101C carbine so it's a slightly different model of gun but it still functions pretty much the same. It's the base all around assault rifle that fires fully auto and has good accuracy. In the first game we had a semi-auto rifle and a burst rifle too so I'm expecting at least another two to three assault rifles in Titanfall 2. In terms of SMGs, we got the car and the alternator. The alternator was my personal favourite. It had way more damage than the car, so it was just brutal up close, but was overall way less accurate. The car SMG, of course, was also in Titanfall 1, although it doesn't look exactly the same, and so even if the guns are similar by name, they aren't just carbon copies. Now onto the LMGs, and we have the Spitfire that was in the first game. Plays fairly similarly. Does decent damage, but it's pretty slow firing, so up close you're going to struggle against assault rifles and SMGs. There is a new LMG though called the L-Star which is a lot of fun to use. It's a rapid energy firing LMG which means you're basically firing a laser beam at people and although it fires relatively slow if you kill someone with it it's incredibly satisfying because it causes them to explode. So it's a bit of a gib gun. I had a lot of fun playing with that. Then the sniper rifles are the same story with one new one we haven't seen called the Double Take and of course the Kraber AP which was also in the first game. The Kraber is a one-shot sniper rifle that it's great at long range, duh, as a sniper should be, but not very effective up close. You also have to lead your shots at range, so it can be pretty tricky to use, but very satisfying if you manage to score a hit. The double take, or the D2 double take to use its full name, actually fires off two shots, hence double take. This thing is pretty brutal and when you combine it with some of the weapon attachments such as ricochet that the snipers have it can be very deadly. Talking of deadly we then got the shotguns or shotgun as there was only one available for us to use in the technical test but it was a damn good one and it's called the Mastiff. This shotgun is just insane. It fires off shots in a really nice widespread and nothing I can say can express how mad it is compared to just showing you. It has to be said though there's a ton of satisfaction to be had while running around or using the grapple and just shotgunning someone right in the mouth before zipping away. It's just so satisfying. Lastly we've got the Grenadier class of weapons and the one we tried here was the EPGG1. It fires off a massive fairly slow moving energy ball. Pretty damaging but also easy to miss with it because it fires so slow. Not one of my favourites to use. For secondaries we had a choice of either pistols, in this case the RE45 or anti-titan weapons. The mag launcher, the charge rifle, both of which featured in the original game and the LG G97 Thunderbolt which fires a ball of electricity which I believe is new. I imagine there'll be a few more options to choose from in the full game. At this point you might be wondering about all of the attachments and customization in the game but I'm going to cover all of that in a separate video. Moving on in Titanfall 2 you can customize your player with a tactical ability just like in the first game. In the build we played there were five to choose from but there'll be around seven in the final game. We had Pulse Blade, Grapple Hook, Clone or Hollow Pilot as it's called, Cloak and Stim. Some of these you'll be familiar with from the first game and others are brand new. I instantly felt that some were more useful than others. The pulse blade for example fires off a sonar knife that pulses around an area and exposes enemy locations. It's worth noting too that if you're detected by sonar it actually comes up on your screen telling you so which in a way nullifies the ability a little bit because you instantly become aware someone is around you know that they can see you and maybe you're going to be a bit more cautious and scanning around or get out of dodge. The grapple hook though was the one that I personally had the most fun with. It's important to know 
note that in Titanfall 2, the players have more weight to them, and as such, you kind of jump a little less fast and a little lower than in Titanfall 1. And although moving around the map and wall running is just fine, I felt the grapple helped you move around just so much faster. You can grapple onto pretty much any surface and it will propel you along, get your location right, and you can swing under obstacles too or around corners if you pick up some real momentum. It was just so much fun to use, and even more so if you hook onto enemy titans, or even better, hook onto an enemy player. Because of that, I just wanted to use the grapple all the time and felt a little bit weaker without it. The hollow pilot was probably the ability I used the least. When we first started playing, I tricked a few people with it, but honestly, after playing the game for a few hours, it became a bit more obvious what was a clone and what wasn't. Maybe for snipers who want to trick people into thinking they're sat in a certain place, it could be useful, but I think after a few hours of play, most players will be able to spot them, but I will say they do look pretty believable for the most part. Cloak, on the other hand, was probably one of the main abilities to rival the grapple. If you're a sniper or using a shotgun, it's especially nasty. Cloaking up, moving in close with the shotgun was a brutal tactic. Of course, you can be seen to a certain extent, but I do think they need to make Cloak a little bit more visible. It was a little tricky at times. What was interesting, though, was it seemed to not take you out of Cloak if you fired, something which, if memory serves me right, didn't happen in Titanfall 1, so I wonder if that's going to change before launch. Last but not least, we've got the Stim, and this was actually pretty good as well. It quickly heals you up and gives you a massive boost of speed. Very useful for the start of matches and for getting out of trouble. Combine the speed boost with some wall running and you can get around faster than you can blink. Out of all the abilities we just went through, Cloak and Stim were available in the original game, as well as one we haven't covered called Active Radar Pulse, which is essentially Pulse Blade anyway. I've kept you hanging right now until the end, but you may have noticed I haven't discussed the infamous smart pistol. You know that incredibly annoying pistol from Titanfall 1 that auto-locked onto you that everyone seemed to be using? Well, it's still in the game, but, and it's a big but, it's now a boost card, which are kind of similar to burn cards, so it's no longer a permanent equipable weapon, and it's something that you kind of have to build up for and use in a burn card or a boost, at least that's something. I think that when the game releases, I'll mostly be using grapple with a mix of stim and cloak thrown in, but there are a few abilities that haven't been shown yet, so we'll see. You will get a chance to play through the game and test out the abilities when the tech test launches fairly soon. And that's all for today folks, I hope you enjoyed this rundown of all the weapons and abilities in Titanfall 2. If you did, give me a thumbs up, if you didn't, a thumbs down. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.